Hello and welcome back and today's episode is The Babysitter and no um, I know what some of you might be thinking but it's not what you think because to my knowledge I've never actually been babysat by anybody ever that I can recall I've never been watched by anybody like that uh, when I was a kid I was always left alone uh, back in the 70s I was what you would have referred to as a latchkey kid although Theoretically, I wasn't because I never actually had a key to my mother's apartment. She never gave me a key. Um, but I, whenever she went somewhere, I was left alone. I never had a babysitter. And yeah, very young too. At a very young age, I was left alone often. Um, time frame I couldn't tell you because I was too young to be really be able to judge how long she was gone sometimes it seemed like a really long time I'm talking about a different kind of babysitting what I'm referring to is actually babysitting contracts that my mother used to take verbal contracts if you will with people that she met that you know hey I'll watch your baby while you go to work that sort of thing my mother herself didn't actually have a job she was a career welfare recipient uh, which is one of the reasons why I'm kinda hard on people who are long-term welfare benefits because growing up in a housing project and especially with my own mother doing it I have seen uh, hordes and hordes of people work the system for a living. Uh, it's a whole other story, but effect effectively she was a, a career welfare recipient and she would take these verbal contracts for babysitting, um, which she did several times, long term, I guess you could call it long term, four, five, six months, she would watch these kids sometimes, uh, mostly infants, and a couple of times a pair of uh, toddler girls twice like three and four three and five something like that no she did not watch these kids I watched these kids and you're talking 9 10 11 12 years old I'm sitting there babysitting a baby all day long like and I mean seven-month-old, eight-month-old, something like that for the whole summer or after school I'm getting stuck with these babies because she would take these uh, verbal contracts with people to watch kids while these other parents went to work um, and I would I would be the one who had to actually watch these children change their diapers, feed them, bathe them, uh, interact with them whatever needed to be done I'm the one that got stuck doing it the reason I got stuck with it was because apparently it was my fault that she had to babysit um, she would go on this rip where she would turn on me she'd show up with this baby and turn on me and tell me it was my fault that she had agreed to watch these children, these babies. Um, I got stuck watching this kid because of you, because you begged me to watch this kid so you could have somebody to play with. And I'm like, I wasn't even there. What the hell are you talking about? What kid? I don't want to watch any kid. I mean, I was a kid. I didn't want to watch some baby, but I'm the one that got stuck doing it she would take these contracts and yes I was the babysitter I'm the one that got stuck with the baby and no refusing was not an option because then I would get the shit kicked out of me even worse than normal um, so I mean I'd spend my summer dealing with like a seven month old baby all day No, I, I was not compensated at all. She kept all of the money. Whatever deal she had worked out, uh, whatever they were going to pay her every week, 
she kept it all. I never got any money at all. Eventually, the whole thing would fall apart for one of four reasons. Reason number one would be that they would discover that I was the one that was actually watching their child or children and not my own mother, like she had promised. And obviously, they didn't like that idea. I mean, they weren't hiring me, and I was just a kid anyway. Reason number two, they would find out what my mother's reputation was in that neighborhood and it would frighten them and they would take their kid away. Uh, my mother had a no was notorious in our neighborhood. She was the crazy lady and everybody hated her. Number three was my reputation. Uh, I was the crazy, crazy lady's son. And worse than that, um, I had developed a separate pseudo uh, kind of reputation because of this babysitting fiasco because I was always around some baby a lot of people thought something was wrong with me they thought I was uh, they thought I was gay or they thought I was molesting these kids and I've been accused of that and I had actually been attacked by people in the neighborhood and beaten up for it I was I would receive crank calls from people telling me that I was a child molester or that I was a homosexual and I'm like nine, ten years old, getting crank calls in the middle of the night, or having uh, teenagers like 17, 18 years old uh, come up to me in threes and fours and kick the shit out of me in the street as if I wasn't getting beaten badly enough at home because they always saw me with this baby. I didn't want to be around some baby. I was being forced to do this, but ignorance is what it is. And the last problem would be that that's problem number four, if you're keeping count, would be that whenever she would watch the child at their home instead of in her home, usually they brought the kid to my mother. When she went to their place, things would turn up missing. Well, really, I should say when she would go to their home to babysit, she would babysit for like about a half an hour and then call me and demand that I come down there so that I could watch the kid because she didn't want to. And then she would rummage through the whole house. I mean, seriously, if you had two nickels that you dropped in a dirty ashtray, I can guarantee you they would be gone by the time you came home if she was there. She would, uh, she would pick through drawers. She would look under the carpets. She would check in the mattress between the seat cushions. She would open the books and flip through the pages. Um, and she found money that way too. But forget it. If there was anything she needed, it didn't matter what it was. Books, uh, jewelry, clothing. She would steal anything she could get her hands on that she thought she could use. And eventually that would catch up with you. People will figure it out. Hey, you know, things seem to go up missing whenever Joan comes around. Yeah. Why didn't she want to watch these kids? Because she hated them. And that's what she would say, too. Not only was it my fault that she was watching these kids, it, the way that she would word it, I, oh, I could almost quote her, you know that I hate children, especially babies. I can't even stand dealing with you. What makes you think I want to watch some baby, and now you've got me wrapped up in this? This is your fault. And you're watching that effing kid. I'm not dealing with it. You're dealing with it. I hate children. I used to hear that all the time. Always talking about how she hated kids. You shouldn't have had any, huh? <laughs> or you should have let my father take me away when you scared him off. That would probably be more realistic. But, I mean, that's the long and the short of it. That was my experience with babysitting. Long term, yes, there were long term effects of it. And actually, Toby was the one who suffered that, the oldest boy from the first relationship, who was not mine biologically, but I'm probably the only father he ever really knew. Uh, when he was younger, I didn't want it. I didn't want to be around him. When he was, a, I knew his mother when he was a baby, 
and I, I didn't want to watch him deal with him. Anything that he needed was a burden. And I didn't think about it at the time because I was young. I was like 20 something. I was like 20 years old. I didn't think about it at the time, but when, as time wore on and I was older, he was older and I thought about it and I was like, you know what? I bet you I was, I had that attitude because I was remembering all of those times where I was forced to take care of children when I was younger and I was harboring subconsciously resentment towards Toby for for that experience but you know you can't go back and fix things I mean I didn't really click until much later when it was too late to really do anything about that because he wasn't a infant anymore he wasn't a toddler anymore I couldn't uh, I couldn't, well, I didn't really know him so much when he was an infant, but still, he was a toddler, same difference. I couldn't go back and fix that. All I could do was apologize to Toby when he was older and just tell him, hey, you know, I'm really sorry. I knew I was terrible when uh, when you were a lot younger. You know, you're too young to remember. He doesn't remember any of it. Uh, he doesn't remember me ignoring him or being angry or or acting burdened but I apologized anyways because it's the right thing to do but yeah it affected me in the long run it took a while for me to figure out that uh, that I had I had subconsciously something built up in me from those experiences one more thing one more thing I have a viewer reminder to let people know who are watching this series that this series spawns out of the documentary from middle class to no class in America and that to refer back to that documentary uh, for references about some of what I'm talking about so just a viewer reminder um, so if you have not seen the documentary I encourage you to go ahead and check it out because there will be a lot of things brought up from the documentary that will be explained in better detail now that I am no longer legally bound to keep my mouth shut. So look forward to seeing you here again.